Hello everyone, welcome to the dark fairy tales from a fisherman talk. So, quick words about <coughs> me. So I do pen testing, vulnerability researching, uh, and uh, I lead the core development of Beef, browser exploitation framework. I wrote with Wade and Christian uh, browser hackers handbook. I was a fisherman and currently I'm a fisherman. So before I was basically doing like uh, tournaments, uh, like surf casting, which is uh, like a discipline uh, that was uh, invented in the uh, United Kingdom back in, in the 60s, 70s, and then it was uh, like uh, imported in Sardinia uh, because we are an island, so you know, the currents are always good and there is always a surf, although we don't have like the, um, you know, the different levels according to the moon, like in the Atlantic Ocean. Um, so, analogy between fishing and fishing. So, there are some analogies, as you can see. So, when you do fishing uh, with this technique, you, do, you prepare your bait, uh, you prepare your line, you prepare your worms, and then you cast the line over the last surf, hoping that some fishes will catch your hook. When you do fishing, you prepare a, pre a pretext, uh, fishing strategy, and then you send your emails. Then there is a second phase where you are waiting for something to happen, regardless if you are fishing uh, in, you know, with a with a rod, or if you are fishing, sending emails. Uh, so you are waiting for some, something to happen, your victims to click on uh, your links, uh, uh, do whatever you want, uh, open your attachments. And then you have the third phase, which is actually the point where you get a big fish. Okay, so you get like a shell on the company CFO laptop, you start to get like financial data out and uh, that's it, depending on the, sco on the scope of your engagements. And uh, this is another analogy, you see, I was fishing in Sardinia, got a nice, you know, set of fishes a few years ago with a bunch of friends, and uh, I was fishing as well a few weeks ago against a bank from Saudi Arabia, and, uh, you know, it was, the, basically the fishes are the victims over there. Um, so, fishing uh, equals, equals, equals fishing, again. Uh, and users are sometimes more stupid than saltwater fishes, seriously. Because when we do surf casting, you can see that if you fish in the same way, with the same kind of lines, hooks, worms, uh, in the same area, uh, after a few years, you can see that if you fish always the same kind of fish, uh, those fishes will become more intelligent. So you need to get like uh, lower diameters of lines, smaller hooks, uh, prepare the bait in a better way and then it's going to be always dif diffi more difficult and difficult because they adapt, they evolve. Instead, uh, uh, victims, um, some of the victims can be you ac actually because, you know, don't think that you are not uh, immune to this stuff only because you know how to do a pen test. Um, so humans apparently do not evolve. We are doing phishing seriously with 15 years old techniques, Microsoft Office macros, HTA files, custom executable files, and you will see a couple of fairy tales uh, which are going to amuse you. Um, so the main point of this talk is to show you um, to show you <coughs> a way to automate uh, a lot of things. Uh, because you know, you know that you always need automation when you do phishing. Who is doing phishing over he uh, here, by the way? Uh, yes, 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 phishing. Uh, my phishing... Uh, <laughs> So anyway, every time is a different story, of course. You need to modify things in your phishing campaigns, uh, footers, uh, URLs, uh, executable things, uh, custom messages, languages, uh, and so on and so forth. So configuration overhead sometimes becomes a killer. Really, you are like with that kind of stress mood. Is it gonna work? Is the link gonna show really as I fucking suppose it was showing? And you can identify repeatable patterns, of course, ways to automate and templating here and there in a way to minimize error. Um, so need, a, need of automation and also speed is key once you got access to victims' access, uh, assets. So um, you, I don't know, you are in 10 minutes, you are collecting 10 credentials for 10 different users uh, in Outlook Web Access, and then you cannot really log in, in like immediately um, to 10 different uh, accounts. Uh, maybe an, an hour later, the police, the, you know, the IT guys in the, in the target uh, network uh, will detect this and they will change the password, so you really have maybe some hours sometimes uh, to really get and ext uh, extrude the da data, so you need to automate. Um, the idea came with, uh, when I saw for the first time Fishing Friends, this Ruby on Rails application that is open source in GitHub, written by Zach Knox, Brendan McCann. We submitted a talk also to Black Hat and Defcon, maybe we'll be there, I don't know. 
right now I present it here as an exclusive for Hackbra. Meet fish loads. So current features is a way is basic. I, I, what I did, I uh, created a Linux image on Amazon EC2, which includes a Debian based and includes basically phishing frenzy, beef uh, and a couple of other tools, which automates for you uh, creating uh, uh, templates, phishing templates. Uh, so highly configurable template system. Uh, you can support HTTP and HTTPS. You can do credential harvesting. Um, so you can ob obviously also integrate through the integration of Beef. You can do client-side attacks using your template uh, exploitation templates, which we will see later. And is some, some of this is obviously a work in progress, which will come uh, that we will be done in the next few months. And then there is a nice reporting stuff, but we will get into demos and stuff, don't worry. What is left uh, as a manual step, if this stuff uh, you know, combines everything, what you, uh, at the moment what you need to do is to configure the um, DNS zone file. Uh, so basically, you know, SPF, DKM, this kind of TXT records, your C name uh, records, depending on how you know, deep you want to go with the phishing stuff. And, um, Configuring starting the phishing campaign in the web app, which is, you're going to see it takes five minutes, literally. And eventually creating, modifying the client side uh, vector or the phishing template uh, if, for example, you cannot find anything really fishable on the victim uh, uh, main domain, FQDN, for example. And then nothing, just wait for things to happen. Um, right now I'm using Amazon, and I've been using this for the past like almost two years. Um, professionally and not professionally with um, uh, the main advantage of it is that you can reboot the AWS instance and every time you reboot the machine you get a new public IP okay so if someone blacklists you you can reboot the machine update the a record in the DNS zone file and in five minutes the, the propagation in DNS will be fast so in five minutes you are up and running with a new domain actually the same domain with a different IP or a different mapping completely so uh, the second thing is that it's very cheap. So you can run this stuff, uh, this uh, image that I created, for about $3, $3.50 for a week. And usually five days is enough, unless you are doing like things with different time frames, uh, very targeted attacks and things like that, where you cannot really like mass mail every day or things like that. Uh, so uh, the first fairy tale, um, this, the inspiration actually is, comes from an old album from Cradle of Field. Uh, so it's called, let's, let's call it the Target Lulz. It was like an act, uh, part of the uh, Australian government, like a, one of the cities, I don't remember. Um, so the FQDN was something like WA, Gov, AU. You cannot register domain names uh, under the AU TLD. So I had to use like something like this, <laughs> which worked in HTTP. So once uh, like uh, identifying the subdomains of the main FQDN, we identified through like a 2000 word list, just checking the DNS. Webmail, VPN1. So the first one was Outlook Web Access 2010. The second one was actually the checkpoint SSL VPN. So you already know what, how it ended up. So this, was that, this one was the phishing email, actually rendering it from the victim mailbox. Um, so it was like, you know, uh, we are from IT, please check if your credentials still work here. And the uh, classic stupid href uh, trick, HTTPS, but there is HTTP behind, who cares? And nothing like, you know, you just need to send it at the proper time. So I woke up at 6 a.m. before. I need to plan on adding some scheduler, like sidekick, into the, into the phishing frenzy app. But anyway, I sent it after lunch, the 46 targets, sorry. And nothing, like uh, this was the phishing page. And uh, after like three hours, before everyone went to, ba to, to back, back home, 40% success rate. So you harvest credentials. The credentials are automatically domain credentials. They work in the AD. Most of the Microsoft sheet works in this way. And nothing like VPN credentials automatically. They didn't have, uh, obviously, they didn't have uh, two-factor authentication on the Cisco uh, SSL VPN. So you connect via VPN 
and you are a completely outside attacker. So now you are in the internal network from an external pen test point of view, you are now in an internal without pivoting, so just straight into the VPN. And this, ad after a few hours, we just like compromise the AD. And uh, yeah, this was basically the FileZilla exe backdoored and nothing like you can see completely pwned. So basically two days of harvesting, preparing, uh, configuring the campaign, sending it, and then compromising it from an internal point of view. Four hours preparation, time, recon. So about $10 total cost, considering a, a C2 cost and the domain registration. Uh, obviously the invoice that, you know, if you ask me to do this, I will like invoice you at least 1,500 euros per, you, per day. But this is like the cost if you want to do it yourself. And no zero days involved as well. So you don't need to burn zero days for things like this. And then there will be another even better example, which is now public from a few uh, months, which I can speak about. Um, more details about uh, the SC2, uh, which is obviously a private one. Nothing is for you right now. Uh, can be used with these two small profiles, so very low memory consumption and very cheap at the, at the end, so $4 per five, six days. Um, the Ruby script, uh, so the, the, the idea is the following. I will show you the code, it's probably easier. Uh, Mario, I need your help. Where is the, uh, okay, rules, yes. rules, yes. That's uh, this one, yeah. So nothing. The, the script is very simple. It's like a Ruby. A, a, there is a Ruby script that basically uses the Fog gem to connect to Amazon uh, to the Amazon EC2 interface in a way that you can, you know, create, list, start, stop instances. Um, it allows you. Uh, what, what it does also, once it connects to it, uh, it basically uh, starts to do a bunch of things. You know, like starting some services, configuring uh, some, changing some configuration files. And then, uh, you know, setting up the whole environment for you in a way that you can just point your browser to uh, the phishing frenzy web UI and then from there control phishing frenzy, beef uh, and uh, mass mailing and this kind of stuff. Uh, I will show you a video in a sec anyway. F5, yes. I can manage it, thank you. Uh, obviously, you, I'm using Amazon SC2, but the script, uh, you just need to change like two lines of configuration code and you can use libvirt, qemu, Rackspace, you name it, Xen server. Um, so this private MEI for now, I will probably release it soon, but Phishing Frenzy, Beef, Apache, MySQL, Postgres, and then I will add some tools as well in a couple of months. So let's check, quickly check a video. Yeah, I don't do lives anymore, sorry. It's too time consuming, too stressful. So on the left, you have basically, you, we have, um, uh, the, fish, like the, the, the fish loose script uh, output, and this one is Godaddy, so it's my phishing domain uh, where I'm configuring some stuff. I don't know if you can see it properly, I don't know. How you, how you see it, okay? <laughs> Said the man with the beer. <laughs> okay. So, um, okay, let me accelerate a bit. So. This one over here is basically the configuration file of the script, um, where uh, fucking Linux. So this is the configuration file of the script where you basically specify the provider you want to use, so AWS Rackspace, the region where your instance is living, the type, the MEI. So this is like the uh, instance ID. So every time you do a change, you create a new MEI, so you do like a snapshot, you say, okay, this is called ID 3, then you do another change, this is ID 4, and here you just change this to the latest uh, uh, stable tested for production snapshot, and then every time that your users wants to do a new phishing campaign, you say, okay, just, you know, update the MEI ID, you can use the latest version or just do a git pull, this is the classic deployment, and then nothing, like uh, AWS keys and uh, nothing public key authentication shit. Uh, yes. So um, here I'm configuring a bunch of things in my DNS zone files. Uh, the, this is the domain name I own, which I use sometimes to do phishing. And it 
for LinkedIn, Def like abusing LinkedIn. Uh, so this is how, where, where the moment where you are creating a new campaign, okay? So you run fish rules, you say you use this configuration file, it's asking you like enter a name for your instance, then enter the name for the uh, phishing frenzy web UI, so where the admin panel basically, so not non-predictable, uh, ideally non-predictable, uh, you know, subdomain. And then uh, where uh, it asks you where you want to run the phishing campaign, so the FQDN where the phishing page should be served from. And once you enter this, it's going to basically connect to Amazon via the RESTful API of Amazon, and then say, take this MEI, use this profile, and run it with these uh, performance uh, options. And uh, then it's going to wait for the instance to be alive. In the meantime, from another shell, invoking the same script, uh, you can basically check what's going on. And here is you are connecting to your AC2 account, and you are listed. You can do like a list of all your running instances. So if you have like five different phishing campaigns for five different customers, you you are going to instantiate five different VMs in a way that you have completely segregated environments, and you cannot like you know if something blacklist someone. You don't have to be using like Apache V host with like three phishing campaigns on the same server is quite risky. It depends on you know what you want to achieve, of course. Uh, and then after like a few minutes, uh, the script runs, change a bunch of configuration files, and then it tells you copy this line, paste it in your browser, careful for this clipboard attacks, and then uh, arrive, uh, arrive to the phishing frenzy UI. Um, I'm speeding up a bit because otherwise it's a bit long. So before doing that, actually, I'm also, now that the instance is run and you have the public IP from Amazon, you are going to just update, uh, we, we just updated before um, quickly the A record for the linkedhn.com. So it points to the instance that is ru now running uh, properly in Amazon. Everything is configured. So you just need to uh, properly add the um, SPF and DKEM TXT records to your uh, to ensure that basically you can bypass any spam filters. In this case, I'm actually using SendGrid as an SMTP server because for a reasonable amount of money, you can send like 40,000 emails per month, which is fine, you know, and uh, you can use their SMTP server reputation. Together with SPF and DKM, you can reach every mailbox. You can reach Gmail, uh, Forefront, uh, uh, protect the stuff, everything. And, uh, because it's not supposed to be abused to send spam, but you know, you can always provide that you are doing some technical job. <laughs> so nothing, you, then at the end, when, once everything is configured, the script is actually telling you, okay, now you are ready to copy this another line of, uh, of code, and uh, of, is actually an SSH tunnel command, in a way that you create an SSH tunnel to the instance, in this case, I'm not using HTTPS, so you can securely connect to your phishing campaign uh, web panel. There is even a little snitch. And uh, once you are connected, it will look like this. So, but now there is the second video. This was just a preamble. And then the second one um, is actually the one where I show, I will show you how everything works. Okay, so this is phishing frenzy. Okay, so um, these are actually the templates that we have loaded currently. So Intel Password Checker, uh, Efax, uh, HTA PowerShell, uh, LinkedIn, which the is the one I'm going to demo, and then others like Outlook Web Access, Office 365, uh, Travel Agency, and others, you name it. These are the current ones that you find public right now. Um, so for example, if you want to check how a template uh, is created, you know, you just check. It's basically like a, a PHP file, which is like this, you know, with your, uh, like this is the, uh, the example of uh, the Outlook Web Access one. And then uh, you have the ERB, okay, sorry, this is the example of the, like, PHP uh, phishing page for Outlook Web Access 2010. Um, then you have the ERB file, which is the email, okay? And as you can see, you have like placeholders like here and things that will be uh, that are template uh, based, so they're gonna be replaced, 
with your like victim names and stuff. And, uh, and then you have other files that are either images that you need in the email to be, to be base64 and added in the email, or uh, uh, attachments like you know, malicious stuff. So in this case, to recreate the LinkedIn uh, phishing uh, email, uh, I had to add you know, a face of a nice girl, which is nice. <laughs> a, a girl. Uh, and that was briefly what, what was the email, but I will show you in a sec in action. Um, the nice thing is that obviously you can configure everything. So the second PHP file that is here actually handles the redirect after uh, your victim will submit uh, the credentials in the phishing form, okay? Because obviously the credentials are arriving to you, then she gets redirected or whatever. In this case, uh, we cannot iframe LinkedIn, otherwise we could have even iframed LinkedIn so to keep control, but that's not possible. So uh, you can change from, uh, from di directly from the web app, you know, the w uh, how the PHP uh, phishing web page looks like, uh, the, uh, the email, and uh, in this case, for example, in the email template, we're gonna change some placeholders with actual values, so like the victim name, uh, the job title, and this kind of things. So this is basically is like what, if you want to use the LinkedIn phishing template, uh, you just need to do like five minutes of this configuration. It really automates a lot so. Grep replace, grep replace, uh, marketing specialist, uh, pawning specialist, whatever. And, and now, you are, once you your template is done and updated, and you think you are all right, you are going to create a new campaign. This part can be automated as well via RESTful API, of course, is something I'm planning to work on. But right now, you know, for demo purpose, we're going to see how you are doing. You can do it right now. So new phishing campaign name, your target list in CSV format, so name, comma, surname, comma, email. Um, and then uh, uh, mark the campaign as active. Yeah, so template selection, sorry. As you can see, you have a drop down where you select the template. As in, this is UI usability. <laughs> Kudos to Zeknox. Uh, and then you have like the SMTP configuration where you define, you know, connect to send grid, use this username and password, TLS, and send emails. And then you have this very important part, which is the email setting itself. The previous one was SMTP. This was is email where you actually configure the fields. So, you know, you do it exactly like the LinkedIn one. So this is a, a perfect clone. It's quite difficult to understand, to, to realize unless you know, you, you, you see the link. Uh, so yeah, you configure, you know, subject from, uh, display from, uh, phishing URL. And then you have the beef integration part. This is the cool part and some of the stuff that you can see here, you can already find it in GitHub in, one, in my phishing frenzy fork if you want to play with it, but you know, up to you. Um, and here, the, the, I mean, the beef configuration, the beef integration is very simple. You pass the URL of the uh, hook and then the RESTful API key. That's it. And then when, uh, you know, you want to do some actions, uh, you can basically do it from here. I will add more things that you can do from here in a way that you don't have to use two different UIs, of course. So now you have your victims loaded. Beef up and running in a screen, in a screen uh, log, uh, screen, screen, in a screen screen session. And then uh, uh, I show you quickly how beef is configured in this case. As I'm using mod proxy, so basically it works like this. Uh, when, fish, when you do launch of the campaign in Phishing Frenzy, it's going to create a vhost file uh, with, you know, moving the, the, the files that you want for the, to be in the, w in the web root of that vhost. And then uh, beef is going to be behind, uh, listening only in the loopback interface. And I'm using mod proxy to proxy requests. Some of them will go to beef. Some of them will go to the phishing uh, uh, website. So in this way, so with proxy pass, uh, proxy pass reverse, in a way that uh, res you respect the same origin. Like you don't need to, you don't need even two domains first. Uh, and then you can have a lot of instances of beef behind. Uh, and uh, you can have like different things, like one with a WebSocket connection, one with uh, a plain XHR connection in a way that you can like maximize uh, like um, uh, hook types because sometimes it's different to follow like to, to switch protocols like 
we had some issues in the past. Um, so yeah, it's all up and running. And uh, what we just need to do is like we tile the production log just to double check. We launch the campaign. So for every email, it's going to do the template parsing, uh, substitution, and then sending the email. This is the first victim. So first, uh, yeah. And um, yeah, the message source. Like if you see the wrong message, it doesn't look uh, like dodgy. You can see send grid and um, stuff like that. I didn't remove this part, of course, but you have to remove it in production, like these comments. And uh, when the victim clicks on the link, this uh, call is already registered by Phishing Frenzy. Bef the beef hook is automatically running as well in the meantime. So you get like a browser OS uh, uh, full fingerprint, and then and geolocation and everything, which will be used later to display uh, like an offline map uh, based on OpenStreetMaps and uh, the GeoIP database. Um, in the meantime, the victim is typing entering credentials, uh, thinking that, you know, it's all legit. And then uh, she gets redirected to the right uh, LinkedIn. In the meantime, uh, uh, if we go in Phishing Frenzy, uh, the report area will contain, you know, will notify what happened. Click registered. And you can see also that, uh, you know, this victim that is corresponding with a specific UID uh, entered th those credentials. You get all the fingerprinting over here, but you can also get a better fingerprinting with the geolocation and the map um, here, where like you can click and check, and then you can like um, you can see. I mean, the cool thing about this, like regardless of the map, which is like you know <laughs> just to show off. Actually, it can be useful sometimes. But uh, the nice thing is that you correlate the name, the surname, and the uh, email that you have from a normal phishing campaign with the operating system, browser, uh, plugin, fingerprint that you get from Beef. You merge all together, including the geolocation. So you have uh, a lot of information to further profile your victims and uh, narrow down the attack uh, path. So like you, instead of saying, I have three op options for later client-side exploits, I will say, OK. Uh, yeah, probably Chrome, Java. No, I will not use like Java signed applets if she using Chrome and things like that, right? Or Internet Explorer 10. Ah, okay, I can use this attack from Rosario Valotta. Okay, okay. So you can basically do more decisions in a less blind way. Uh, the second victim is actually the one that is in Outlook. As you can see here, to protect your pride, this is like the standard uh, uh, webmail client thing. So to prevent uh, that your email is fact and uh, the email is not retrieved from an external source. You can base 64 the image or whatever data, and it's going to be shown, even in Gmail and stuff. Um, in this case, instead of clicking uh, to simulate, you know, to show you that the, the cool, how cool the map is, I'm going to just like copy the link, uh, open it from Safari, and being connected from a VPN from London. Um, Actually, this is also actually I, know, I shouldn't say this for the OWASP speaker agreement. <laughs> so, mail marshal trust your security product got bypassed by this. But whatever. So you re-establish re the tunnel and then connect. Sorry, connecting from London and refreshing the page. Yes, like you see the other one, the other connection. This one is actually like, it's not really an hooked browser. It's like the trusted product that tries to uh, check if my link is malicious and failed. And then you get the hooked browser. Um, yeah, so basically here you can differentiate ideally, you know, black and blue hooked browsers and stuff. And having the correlation, you can see, for example, that this one has a QuickTime plugin 773. So if you have a zero day for it, you deliver it. And you deliver only that. You don't run that noob stuff of Metasploit, uh, autorun, uh, uh, crazy shit. If you want to get caught, then you do that. And uh, obviously, it's important to don't get caught uh, specifically when you do client engagements. Otherwise, they think you are, you know, a noob. And uh, this is the second victim that will enter the password. And uh, 
you will see here the second one clicked, success rate 100%, uh, everyone is happy, and then uh, you can start to think about the further attack paths, for example, you know, uh, spreading malware through her LinkedIn profile and things like that. Um, so, yes, fishing done. So, the second fairy tale um, is actually a nice story that is public. You can read it online. Uh, there is not my name over there or the other Brazilian friend of mine that did it with me because we didn't want it to leave. You know, anyway, I'm telling you. Uh, the Telegraph UK asked us to provide, uh, uh, like, uh, let's say, red teaming uh, on a specific journalist. So, Sophie Curtis. At the end, we did a full remote one. We didn't like the, uh, do something with Rogue Access Point or stuff like that. It was a pure remote one. Uh, the target name was provided and was uh, Sophie Curtis. So we did some reconnaissance on this uh, journalist and we found that she, yeah, she probably had an Android. She was actually quite uh, aware. So a less, uh, like a target attack, uh, not too, too difficult, but still, you know, not from like a, a total noob. She was writing about IT stuff, security breaches. She was really into this uh, Snowden leak shit and all, all, all so on and so forth. So, uh, so we said, okay, so it's going to be a staged thing. So generic LinkedIn invite phishing campaign first, because we found her in LinkedIn first. So we knew that she had an account. We did the, the, the targeted, sorry, the generic attack like this. Uh, the aim was to fingerprint and then also get the email provider technology that uh, she was using when getting our phishing email, which was identified to be Google for Business. And, you know, it's... Google are actually quite good at preventing spam and uh, this kind of stuff. So it was an additional thing to, do, to, to bypass. And uh, that was the first step. The second step, uh, we thought about you know, three different attack plans. So a custom executable uh, with a, inside a RAR, a Word document with a PowerShell macro, or an HTM, HTML application attack, if uh, eventually if she was using Internet Explorer. Uh, and the PowerShell macro if she was using Microsoft Office and Exe. So we were supposing that she was on Windows. Uh, and in fact, it was. Um, so nothing. this was the phishing email that I sent to my own address, of course. Uh, to test, is always recommendable that you do a full test every time, unless you are really sure that your software doesn't fuck up. Uh, and now I'm almost there. but. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so she clicked on the, on the LinkedIn one, and uh, we identified via Beef, uh, you know, a bunch of plugins. Uh, so Office 2012, Java 1.7, Update 51, this was in September 2004. So Citrix ICA client, uh, quite interesting. Okay. Um, and you can see, obviously, like, the geolocation below, but whatever. So we said, okay, I'm gonna, we're going to deal with Windows and, and uh, cool. So let's go for the first uh, attack. So the custom encoded exit inside password encrypted RAR. Very, very, very elite. <laughs> like, again, 15 years old attack. So, so we had, uh, you know, we were happy to prepare a, a custom, uh, a custom uh, pretext. So we were like speculating that we knew that MI6 was compromising the Brazilian elections. And that was actually some, there were rumors about this, like involvements of CIA and this kind of stuff back in, the, in that September 2014. So we said, okay, this looks actually a pretext that is plausible. Plausible. And then the second part of, sorry, if, I don't know if you are done reading it, but yeah, basically this is what happened. We went to in some details, uh, naming shit and stuff. Uh, and then the second part, there is some part that they removed, and then uh, the second part was, okay, so here we, we are giving you, we want to give you this leak in a way that the Telegraph can actually publish it. And uh, so we have uh, a RAR in the email as an attachment, the password is this one, <laughs> okay, and then, you know, make sure that you do this, this and that, uh, UK leak team, uh, blah, 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 sincerely. So, yeah. At the end, uh, uh, as we said, uh, Gmail for business was used. This is why we use the RAR. Because if you encrypt the zip, uh, there is the file name leak. So the, uh, Google will detect it. But uh, Google, as far as I know, still now doesn't detect this. Uh, like uh, encrypted, uh, encrypted RAR with a custom exit inside. 
Um, so phishing domain with SPF and DKM, encrypted drive with custom eggs, and it arrived. The custom eggs was basically like uh, a meterpreter, uh, nothing, uh, I didn't reinvent the wheel. So meterpreter, HTTPS, reverse DNS, and then also out of, out of bound extra extrusion via Outlook profile, so via SMTP emails. Um, and uh, so it triggered like actually the first two, the third one she didn't have Outlook, she was using Gmail web app. Um, custom encoding uh, without no need to name the tool and then Adobe PDF uh, modified icon plus the long Windows file name trick which worked perfect in Windows 7 and uh, so custom message box as, uh, we also added so the nice thing is that we added uh, uh, also a, a message box function so as soon as you click on the exit while the shells were triggering you can get you, you was also getting like a small pop-up uh, with the PDF icon saying Adobe Reader could not open x66.exe.pdf.ex. Uh, so at the end she clicked and uh, we got camera and microphone access. Uh, so basically that's it. Uh, two days. Plan, plan A was successful, so plan B, which was already prepared, uh, we just kept, kept it for us. And that was another potentially plausible story because Occupy Central was happening in Hong Kong back in September 2014. Uh, and then, you know, we could have used like a Word document uh, rather than an exe file uh, if uh, the exe file was failing. Um, so, yeah, it's mostly about uh, choosing the right pretext. Um, yeah, again, no zero days involved. Eh? And this was a targeted one. So, yeah, so I'm almost done anyway. Uh, other five minutes. So, more f if you want more fairy tales, uh, I could have other stories to share, but to be honest, uh, you should check like the talk that uh, Krzysztof, which is somewhere here as well, uh, and me did uh, uh, last year in Insomniac. Uh, if you want to see some like nice exploitation for the masses, then some of the videos from the Browser Hackers Handbook Companion website, which are pretty cool, and uh, yes, Vimeo and things like that. I'm also, as we will see later, working on uh, Autorun engine. So. Yeah, the work in progress is basically integration with URL crazy uh, for domain registration providers. Uh, I mean, the idea is to have in the Ruby script a way that you specify the FQDN of your target and, uh, and then uh, it's gonna tell you, okay, I suggest you to register these 10 domains. One is with a bit flipping, one is a, I don't know, homoglyph, uh, one is uh, like a character permutation and uh, things like, like that, which you do via URL crazy. And then once you have selected your one or multiple domains, it asks you, okay, you want to buy them? Yes. Then RESTful API call to Namecheap or Godaddy. You buy the domain, it does the configuration for you, and then it starts the VM. And then once the VM is started, it just updates again the A record and the SPF and DKM. And so you just like, uh, have the campaign to configure, but then it will also, you know, configure the campaign for you and uh, just let you choose profile, exploitation profiles, that's the idea, which you prepare in advance as JSON files. Um, so other stuff, more reporting capabilities. So for example, this one was something that is currently available as a report if you have like a proper, uh, you know, if you run the whole thing that I showed before. Uh, so proper correlation and uh, another nice work in progress from a while actually is the server side uh, auto run engine so it's basically a way to say to beef at runtime uh, eat this json file and understand that i want to run uh, if the browser uh, is in transplorer 10 i want to run this this and that uh, in a chain and i want to run the third one only if the second one doesn't fail and then get the response from every module Things like that. So you can automate a lot of things. You can chain like um, uh, UI abuse tricks uh, with, uh, you know, serving extensions for Firefox and stuff like that. Or the HTA tricks uh, can be automated like really, really nice uh, in a really, really nice way. Or do the classic, you know, you remember in Twitter, uh, fuck, I have to say that. Uh, six months ago in Twitter that everyone was saying, ah, 
WebRTC, uh, you can uh, declock uh, people, uh, VPN, uh, internal IP addresses. This was the Hacker News uh, news. And this is actually known from 2012. It's written in the book. There is the BIF module. So no one gives a fact, like the Greg said, like no one reads everything. So whatever. So you can automate things like this that are automated already in BIF from months, which are like, uh, as soon as you get a hook, you get the WebRTC IP from Chrome and Firefox, if the browser is Chrome and or Firefox. And then uh, uh, you start to get the subnet, enumerate the subnet with uh, like Garrett A's techniques uh, back in the days, and which still work. And then you can like uh, do, for example, blind cross-site request forgery attacks on routers or things that were successful a few weeks ago with some friends who were using shell shock cross-origin blindly on 80.443 in the internal network. And we pawned a bunch of NAS, uh, like outdated QNAP uh, things. Um. So, and this was, uh, this is basically the idea of uh, how a JSON uh, file for the like auto run template for beef is gonna look like. So you define the target, then the version that you want to target, then you define here the modules, and these are like two different modules with ID condition if you need it. So for example, uh, run the second one only if the result of the first one is the string or is, uh, I don't know, bigger than this number or this something like that. And then uh, the, 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 the name of the module, which either that or the ID, whatever, and then the options, so parameters input that you need to pass to the module to work. and. Uh, you can like chain them in a way, you can delay them, and you can change the execu execution order. This is like very rudimental, but that's the initial idea I had. I'm gonna work on this, improve it, and then mm, finally code it. It shouldn't be that difficult. And uh, it's gonna open a lot of possibilities, in my opinion, uh, because basically then, if, when you do a phishing campaign, what you need to do at the end is just prepare enough phishing templates uh, for the web page, for the email, and uh, for the second exploitation part that will cover enough use cases you think that you know you will basically need to minimize. Uh, you can uh, minimize a lot of the time required to do phishing in this way. And uh, yeah, that was not the ISIS flag, which in my opinion is all bullshit, this ISIS thing, just beef offline browsers. So yeah, hope you enjoy the Dark fairy tales. <laughs> yeah. So, questions? Yes, yes. So, uh, I guess in all of these cases, uh, there were customers who wanted to interview you to do this, right? Mm -hmm. So you are interested to know how the victims uh, respond, like the customer responded. Yeah. yeah, sometimes very scared, or sometimes they were saying, ah, we added, the, this was detected by WebSense, but like three hours late after I had all the hooked browsers, so three hours later they blocked. So sometimes they get scared in this way, so they, you know, they say, ah, you got detected, you need to stop, or sometimes they just like, yeah, they don't, they, they really don't get it. like. Sometimes uh, I, I pawned these customers that, for example, had like, uh, I was browsing like messages from 2013 in their web mailbox, and they had like mails from different security companies that were providing phishing training in the past, like phishing, like protection from phishing, and still they got, you know, pawned. So it's, it's very mm, relative, the reaction. I mean, sometimes uh, when you do this stuff, they ask you to limit the scope a lot, so you can just get the credentials check if they work, and that's it. But then, you know, when the scope is, is, is more open, it's definitely more interesting. Yes? Well, no, similar to that, but I was, I was just wondering, what, what's, a, what's, been, what's a good way for a company to react? When you, when you go back to a customer and present what you're able to do, what, what are the better reactions you've had? What makes your job harder? Uh, well, so, sometimes, uh, um, I don't know, like, um, if they have like a proper, um, if they if they are able to properly prevent like uh, exfiltration traffic, for example, if they have like uh, I don't know HTTPS proxy that blocks certain things, yeah, they block DNS. Sometimes is you know, 
Sometimes you might get frustrated when you don't see the reverse shells coming back, for example. But uh, sometimes you don't need that, so you revert back to other things like exploiting web apps from the outside as well. It depends. It's like a mix of everything. Otherwise, uh, mm, yeah, I mean, the, the anti-spam filters are never a problem, for example. So I, I don't know really how to fix this with anti-spam solutions because there is no way. I've heard about some people doing uh, uh, like images of uh, you want to whitelist your bank website, so you do an image of uh, how the page looks like. Then you do the same on the phishing uh, page when you are comparing it, and then you compare that with the URL as well. So even if the phishing page is perfectly is equal, then they check the URL. But you need to have that whitelisted in advance, so it's not really scalable. So I'm not sure. I don't really have a, a clue how you can prevent these attacks. Probably training people to don't click on links. Uh, things like that. Like, oh, one thing is obvious. what I do personally, I always render emails in plain text. I never render them in HTML. Then I, I, I copy and paste, uh, again, <laughs> I will consider that again, but uh, I copy and paste the links and, you know, things like that. But don't use web mails as well. Uh, use it uh, like a, a client. Yeah, basically. How often have you seen proper incident response? Um, yeah, sometimes, sometimes. It depends on the customer. Uh, there were cases of large financial companies that, for example, uh, they were really shit at it, and then sometimes uh, uh, large uh, hotel uh, retailers that, for example, uh, were um, getting so panicked that uh, they, 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 for they were forwarding us. So we said, we will start this month. We don't tell you when. This month. And they sent, we started like uh, in the middle of the month, and from the 1st to the 7th of the month, they sent like every day different phishing emails that we were not sending, that they were receiving, and they were saying, I, is, is it you? No. Is it you? No. Like this, you know, looping. And so sometimes you have this kind of reaction. And it's a bit, yeah, shit. <laughs> I'm, I'm referring to after you hacked them. Yes. And you were in their system and pulling out their stuff. I've been doing this for a while as well, and the usual reaction is that sooner or later, system administration is finding out, and they're sending an email: "We're being fished. Don't click on the link." And that's all they. Do. Ah, yes, yes, okay, that happened as well, and so. so shells keep on going and everything. Yeah, so for example, sometimes it happened that uh, we had, uh, we, we could, for example, uh, so we reply to that email, spoofing the the email of the IT guy once we were, because you monitor obviously what your victim has access to, so when you see things like that, you reply spoofing the IT guy and saying uh, it was all a false alarm, please go back, or maybe click on this ad as well. <laughs> like, if you clicked on it works. Link, please sometimes click on this. If you didn't click, click on the other link. Yeah, sometimes yeah. it works, like uh, you just following your victim. So, sometimes you, for, when you do target attacks, you want to have like a mailbox where you can receive replies. So you get a proper interaction, you know, and you use your social engineering skills at the end in that case. Uh, yeah. In my experience, most organizations are not prepared to deal with an actual breach. No, I don't think so. so I mean, there are people over there trying to let us think that you can buy a product uh, for 50,000 euros and then uh, you can have your ass covered, but you know that is not true, so, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't know. I mean, it's mostly about like how the human uh, interacts with systems most of the times. You know, it's 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 very hard to to. We can do a philosophical discussion with uh, with with David maybe <laughs> about the topic. <laughs> it's yeah. I would say that uh, let's say that I'm more interested into the offensive part, and then uh, the training is something that maybe we will create. I don't know. Uh, honestly, I have no idea. Any other questions? Yes. No, sometimes uh, we use Veil, or sometimes we use just like those like tools that you can get uh, in like the dark web uh, and pay them for a, for a while, and that's it. Uh, yeah, mostly like that. And then we use fakv.ru to check the payloads because they don't share the payload with uh, Virus Total. The what, sorry? PDF, 
<laughs> the most form file formats ex executed, but well, it depends, like uh, Xs on Windows, I guess. Uh, yeah, like uh, DMGs on uh, on uh, yeah. On, on like you can, for example, like uh, for OS X, you can uh, like send to the, to a guy like uh, you know that he's, he's using PowerPoint, for example. You want to send him. Uh, I've seen like people uh, already doing that. They send uh, DMG files that contains an executable, and when you double click, you think that you are installing the PowerPoint template, and rather than that, you are triggering a reverse shell. Things like that. So, see, the possibilities are infinite. Infinite possibilities. Any other questions? Yes, I don't. Yes. Uh, have you act, tried to? Ah, no. Ah, yes. <laughs> that was uh, Mario alone in the night, and he said, what I have to do, I have to pound beef. Back in the days, yes, it was good, yes. But I don't use the web UI. I'm just using the RESTful API. So, for people that are uh, yeah so stupid to use my shitty coded web UI. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah. So if you don't have any other questions, guy, or yes, if there is some other question, I can I guess handle other two questions. Yes. Um, like, there are a couple of endpoint security systems that I cannot mention for the, the OWASP speaker agreement, uh, which obviously you can, they detect beef, for example, and, uh, I bet they, and you can bypass them uh, using the uh, evasion extension that I added, like, back in the days for 44Con, I think. Um, so, most of them, they are just regexing the JavaScript for either global variable names or function names. So as soon as you scramble both of them, with a, like hash table, whatever, uh, you bypass them. I cannot name them, but <laughs> it's not a big problem usually, unless they have something very advanced, which so far uh, still didn't happen. But I, my plan is to get you know all those tools, all those products uh, like you know WebSense, uh, SWG again, and uh, a bunch of others, maybe FireEye, and then you know try them out and check how it works. Yeah. Any other? Yeah. Do you plan to add something to the image so that you can uh, follow up your phishing campaigns to be able to somehow convince the victims to help you bypass the voucher authentication? Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, yeah, we can. Yeah, we can discuss it. It's really interesting. Yeah, I've seen people. Uh, yeah, abusing the camera to like the victim camera to then get like some pictures of what she was doing but yeah we should yeah we should speak about it it's actually quite interesting i still didn't have uh, sometimes yeah there was the problem of two-factor authentication for example in outlook web access in a, like a bank uh, it happened but um, but then there were other routes other, uh, that you can anyway use because once you get the ad credentials then uh, some of the services that are exposed will be two-factor authenticated other not so but yeah Good point. We will work on it. Guys, anyone else? No. Cheers. Thanks.